你同学他叫什么来着？严硕。他平时一直都这么内向啊。他在班里跟谁都不说话，挺奇特一个。喂，去我家玩。他们爸妈是做什么的？我爸是搞生物的，他在一个仪器公司工作。我妈，她以前是个空姐。现在家里管着我。我爸从来不听巴赫。你怎么知道巴赫的？那你妈妈呢？她死了。你爸为什么打？他经常打你吗？他爸今天放学来接他。他爸不会对他做什么吧？严硕。interview for Key Crush America magazine for the 2024 Sundance Film Festival. I'm your host, Carolyn Hines, film critic and journalist, and today I am joined by writer and director Lin Jian Jie to talk about his film Brief History of a Family, which is about this young boy who's about 15, 16, who basically in slowly ingratiates himself into this family of three, father, mother, and son, Wei, who is um, Xiu's friend, sort of like you're never really sure if they were ever really friends before at school after being injured on the playground and this film is really intriguing to me visually because i love how you use editing as well as cinematography and photography and exposure and color in this film so we're definitely going to get into those themes and the film is I, it does talk about the the one child policy that china had from 1970 to 2015 and it was a way for the government to kind of like do population control because they were worried about China becoming overpopulated. And it worked for a while until it started to backfire because if you do something for too long, it's going to have consequences. And for the Chinese um, government, for the population, the consequences were that the birth rate began to fall too low, for, especially for a country the size of China. And your film talks about that in a very subtle way. And it, and it talks about it not in a political sense, but in a family sense. You bring it from the grand scale of the of the country and the politics and bring it into how it affects these families individually. So, but first, something I want to ask you about your start as a filmmaker, because you began as a bio engineer, and, or biomechanics, sorry. So talk about going from that background into filmmaking. Um, it's more of a, I mean, first of all, I was in a, I was just a student. Oh, you were just a student. Yeah, I was just a student. I didn't have any work experience. Mm -hmm. um, and one, it was more of an early existential crisis when I decided to um, try to decide what to do after mm -hmm. my undergrad study. I actually got this really good opportunity to pursue a PhD um, with one of the probably the best uh, biology prof um, professor and expert in, in the field. Mm -hmm. who, in the top universities in China, but I, I just had a moment and I asked, I was um, I was told that it's going to be a 10 year commitment. Mm -hmm. And at the time I just had a little bit of um, doubt. So I started to like, do, I, I did some soul searching and I was like, you know, maybe this is not the direction I wanted to go. So I, I try to try, I, I try to like look for things that I, I, I could be interested in mm -hmm. pursuing. And film is something that even after I decided to pursue film, I didn't know if, if it's the right path for me. Like I, I, I got into NYU and I started doing these things, learning and doing short films. I don't know if it's, I didn't know if, if it was the right path for me still. But then it's like, I, I guess step by step, you kind of get a, a little bit more reassured mm -hmm. about, about this. Yeah, you, you learn to love it in the process and become more confident as you yeah. as you do it. And the reason I wanted to start with that, with your background, is because it actually plays a very big part 
in the construction of this film. And the first, at first, uh, you're wondering why is there um, uh, imagery of cells, you know, of, of the of the you start basically literally from the micro, like the you go from the nucleus and we see like the phase macrophages and all of this stuff happening throughout the film, and you see like some. Um, Cell division, and so, and it was like very proud of myself because I remembered all of this stuff from from biology, and so like you get to see all the different part, like the different aspects of but human biology broken down into the micro, but then you brought it out into micro. And you said, and you, like each of these people have all of these things in common, but then when you look at them as individuals, like they're all very different, especially in the family. You can be a family, but like each person has very different personalities, has very different expectations of themselves and for their family. So talk to me about using your background um, in this film. And I thought it was interesting that you just said you weren't sure if you were if you were about being a filmmaker, but you managed to insert your background, that the one you left, mm -hmm. and put it into this film. It was uh, also a way to... Um, because in the beginning, I was not very sure because when I was in film school, mm -hmm. I also feel like everyone come from film, so mm -hmm. I, I didn't, and I... I I feel a little bit, um, what's the word for it? I feel not ashamed, but I feel like I, I didn't want to uh, tell people that I came from a different background. I didn't mention my biology background for a long time. And when I was researching for the project, I had a little bit of a problem with the father's um, job. And one day it just came to me like, why, why did I fight? You know, why did I resist what was part of me? And I was like, let's just embrace it, you know, like, and then that is a turning point in, in, in a way that not just for the character, but for the whole um, concept of the story. And because it helped me find an angle, a perspective to kind of uh, to tell the story. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the, the thing that came not just from the character, because that's his job. I mean, it's, it's a very basic level, but like it's all just this, this perspective. Yeah that becomes really inspiring for the development process. Right, and I think you should embrace like your background because every filmmaker doesn't go to film school, you know? Mm -hmm. Some people start without ever having done um, any professional or traditional education in filmmaking, but the backgrounds play a very important part into how they craft the stories, you know? Like I've spoken to people who were marketers, you know, and that and being a, a marketer, it works in how they make their film. You know, it gives them an, an idea of how to make a film different to someone who didn't do it. You know, but if someone was an accountant, mm -hmm. they might have a different understanding of the mathematics and the economy of making a film and how to like make characters who have these traits. So you know, mm -hmm. so I think it's important that you do embrace it. Mm -hmm. And I, if I, if it was me, I would have been the bragging like, yeah, I did biomechanics, like. <laughs> that's pretty cool you know and like for me I kind of relate to because mm -hmm. I didn't set up to be a film critic or a journalist I went to school to be a paralegal mm -hmm. you know I graduated and here I am you know I'm, I'm, a, I'm a paralegal but here I am and like I think it's important to embrace those kind of those differences because that's how your characters are your characters no character is the same you know mm -hmm. each character has a different backstory each character has a different motivation mm -hmm. and that's a very big part of this film because the backstories and the motivations of these characters drive a lot of the decisions they make. You know, mm -hmm. like for the dad played by um, Zhu Fang, he his background being as educate, being having this very strict educational background and having these very high expectations of himself and his mm -hmm. wife and his son comes from the fact that he grew up in a poor um, environment that he that he inhabits now. Mm -hmm. You know, and that drives his relationship with his son. And then it drives a relation, the relationship with Xiu, yeah. you know. So like, yeah. like you, you got that, you got that sense. So you talked about the database. So talk about constructing the other characters, especially Xiu. He's uh, he would be he's a protagonist because he's like the lead. Because this is but this is more of an ensemble film. But he's kind of an antagonist. He's almost like a villain in this film. And like you don't know whether to trust this boy from the very beginning because mm -hmm. even the way you, the very opening shot is where he's hanging up on the bars. And you hold it so long, that shot is held so long. But to me, it kind of shows his determination. He's a very determined character. So talk about crafting Shio and Wei and the mom. Um, I think, let's start with, um, which, which one should I start with? 
I want, let's yeah. let's start with the mom because I yeah. want because Wei and Xiu okay. have a very interesting dynamic. But the yeah. mom, she's kind of like um, very unassuming at first, but she I like that her character slowly becomes more yeah. assertive as the film goes along. Exactly. I think for me, she's the emotional drive mm -hmm. in a way in, in the film because she's the one who, in the beginning, she f also had a past that she kind of lost her passion somehow right. in the in the marriage in her life, and then she's she's trying to find something to rekindle her passion. Mm -hmm just for life in general. So I think she then, with Shuo coming in, she, she became more um, alive. Right. In, you know, in, in that sense. And it's, uh, it's, it's very, it's a nice feeling that she's chasing. So she became the emotional drive of the film of trying to make some decisions of, uh, of actually taking Shuo in more and more, opening herself and opening the family, you know? Mm -hmm. Right, and, and for, and I love her because she's, she's not judgmental mm -hmm. because I'll be honest, I do watch a lot of Chinese dramas and films and stuff, and there's the very real issue of social class and social hierarchy mm -hmm. in um, China, and as well as like, in every other country. But And so because they're, li they're living in a pretty affluent neighborhood and they have a very pretty um, rich economical life, and they have a certain status because of the husband's job, I, I did assume that she would react very badly to Xiu coming in. You know, I was afraid that she would judge him, you know, that she would say, well, you're bringing this strange boy into my house. But she's very open and welcoming mm -hmm. from the very beginning. And I love that about her. And I, and I really appreciate that you didn't make this character a stereotype because mm -hmm. she very could have easily been. Mm -hmm. So yeah. so I love that you did that with her. And so tell me about Xiu and Wei. They're like night and day. People were saying yin and yang, but that's not, mm -hmm. the, to, to me, they're mm -hmm. not that. They're more um, open and secrets. Yeah, one yeah, is like a closed exactly. box, and the other one is like a is like an open is like an yeah. open book. Yeah, exactly. I think that you touch a very important point in my casting process mm -hmm. because these two boys coming in, um, doing the casting, and they actually attract me in very different ways. Mm -hmm. Sure, exactly because of that openness, because mm -hmm. he wanted to show himself um, that he can he can handle the role. He wanted to uh, really like perform. I mean, perform in a good, in a right, good yeah. way, but. Um, but it's, uh, on the other hand, Wei, uh, sorry, Shuo, he is more, um, he, he has this great presence that he just holds your attention mm -hmm. and then he, like you wanted to know more about him, but he's not really telling, telling you that much. Yeah. So I think that's the, a great quality that he has, that he keeps that mystery while keeping you wanting to know more mm -hmm. about him and that's what that's why they got the roles yeah um, and show he's played by um son she and for such a young actor he's very good at being mysterious mm -hmm. and he's very good at making you this making you question like he's a child but you feel uneasy mm -hmm. you know if this was a horror i would straight up not believe him because i don't trust any child in any horror movie i think mm -hmm. they're a detriment to human life <laughs> but i keep <laughs> but for a very young actor, he's very good at having this air of mystery. And then when he's supposed to be, um, when he's supposed to have this air of menacing, he's very good at having that. Like I see, like there are grown actors who don't have that quality. He has it at a very young age. And then for the actor who plays Wei, uh, Le Muran, he is almost the same way where it's like, are you? I'm, I, I'm afraid to trust him because I'm afraid that his relationship with Xiu is going to become violent and in a sense it does but not in the way you think mm -hmm. you know and I was worried that he, his jealousy would lead him mm -hmm. to becoming violent and not only violent towards Xiu but to the mother like you know and like resentful towards them but it doesn't do that and again this is you I think you're for you the way you craft these characters subverts a lot of tropes and a lot of expectations mm -hmm. that the audience would have right and so and so for the character that plays way his he has a very childlike quality where he's like there's this innocence to him where you can see he wants his father's trust and he wants his father to just accept him for who he is but he's mm -hmm. also very determined like once he makes his mind up for something he sticks with it mm -hmm. and he doesn't even let his own dad like dissuade him from making yeah. the decision and I think that's important too like because it also plays a part in how the film plays out like the fact that he's a determined person does is what drives I think drives the film a lot because he's like you know what something's not right and that really challenges him to like really step up to his dad when he needs to mm -hmm. yeah so so tell me about him in particular because he's almost to me he's the real mystery of the film because you don't know what he's going to do you don't know how he's how his character is going to play and progress play mm. Mm. Um, 
I think interesting that you said because I think for way we kind of um, walk through all the stages that he's going to go through during the film in the rehearsal process mm -hmm. um, but then like, of course because I think he the, the actor himself mm -hmm. Lin Moran he brought a, a very good sense of, he's he's brought this very genuineness and then he is also very I mean he has this, this humor offbeat humor mm -hmm. and then he just make way very very relatable and mm -hmm. very very um, lovable mm -hmm. and that actually adds to the mystery because you don't want to believe um, that he's going to do something bad but you fear that he's going to do something bad and it, it from the shots from the camera movement you kind of feel like he is going to do but then you kind of don't want him to do right. you don't believe that you don't want something bad to happen to any of them right so I think yeah. because how he brought part of himself into the character it became like you fall in love with him, mm -hmm. then he become more mix mysterious. I think that's a very nice uh, touch. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a, it is a mystery how these two boys move around each other. You know, they're kind of like um, and you use fencing. Fencing, I think for this film, there's a lot of mot motifs and themes I use, and I see fencing as that. Like these two boys, you know, way they're like two fencers. You know, they're coming from opposite sides, and like mm. it's it's a fight, but it's a fight from a distance because with fencing, like there's rules. To the game you know like you can't you like if you parry you can only parry in a particular way if you step the wrong way you get disqualified and for me i kind of saw their interactions a lot like that where they're mm -hmm. moving around each other they're parrying they're thrusting and stepping back and like testing mm -hmm. each other's limits mm -hmm. and you use that in the fencing but there's something you do with clothing mm -hmm. right, in this film mm -hmm. that's very interesting the use of shirts mm -hmm. and sweaters and colors like there's a shirt that um way owns it's a, it's a champion shirt you know the brand champion mm -hmm. but it has mm -hmm. champion all across it Mm -hmm. And their first interaction when he brings Shio home, he's giving Shio a, white, a plain white shirt to sleep in. And Shio's like, I don't want that. Mm -hmm. He's like, give me the one you're wearing. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was so interesting because it's like, you can see he's already in, not only ingratiating himself between the parents, mm -hmm. but he's already trying to usurp Wei's position within his own space. So I love that scene. So tell me about that scene because I think that's one of my favorite scenes in the entire film because it's just, it says so much about who these boys are and, who these, and what this film is about. Mm -hmm. Uh, that is also done with a lot of ambiguity mm -hmm. because as much as you think it is some us usurping mm -hmm. but it's also um, he's just like an opportunist in a way mm -hmm. that he's like oh I, I like this one you know he could be innocent mm -hmm. in what he says so I think this all um, rely on uh, Shun performance mm -hmm. as as sure as someone who like you just keep guessing what he really is thinking, mm -hmm. you know, but he's not really telling you. Yeah, it's like, what is like, what is your real motive? Like, what, are, like, what are you thinking, guy? Like, is this like, like you say, like it could, and is I think for a lot of people it could be the way how you also is about how the audience interprets a lot of scenes. And for me, I just like interpreted everything he did as a competition. Mm -hmm. You know, because there's like the scene where they're playing the game with the coins, and he's mm -hmm. like, oh, the person who moves second gets to determine who wins. You know, and like a lot of their yeah. interactions. It's about winning like and losing. It's, yeah, it's everything yeah. like that. Yeah, I think I think in a because I didn't want to do a classical sort of a, a, a conventional genre film. Mm. I also didn't want to do a very standard um, drama. So if it, if it was a, um, a, a a classical sort of genre film, this would go to more of that direction mm. of more violence and more like the revealing the dark motif. Mm. But it's not. Mm. So I think that by taking away that, the movie become really a life. For me, a very different. Yeah, very special. Yeah, because there's a lot of things he does. It's kind of like marking his territory, <laughs> but yeah. the f and it literally and figuratively, <laughs> right? And I thought that scene, the scene, the lady <laughs> next to me was like, "Oh my god!" I'm like, I, "The lady next to me was like, oh my god!" But for me, I was like, "I was like, this is a genius scene right here." I'm like, "This is he's like an animal marking his territory, right?" And so I actually, I was like, I was like, and it was, I think it was a brave scene to do because like he's such a young actor. Yeah, yeah. And so I, so I thought it was a brave. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the things you. It's it's hard to discuss like the meaning behind it with with him, but mm. it's an important scene. So we only fi uh, focus on the technical side of how to do this without like because we need to protect him, of yeah, course. Of course. Uh, but then um, we also need to achieve what we want to achieve. Mm. So a lot of things with sound it plays in the audience mind, and the just you just listening to this sound for you know the sound of being for a long time, and then that makes us. It's all about how the image and sound. Mm -hmm 
you know affect the audience you know so I think it's also about not what what's not shown mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it's about making the audience uncomfortable yeah. and that scene kind of plays into the very first scene with him holding onto the handlebars because you said it's a scene that kind of goes on and on and you're wondering like how long can this guy hold out and then mm -hmm. it's again it's, I think as another sign of just like his personality like mm -hmm. he's a very determined person and he's like if I make if I'm trying to make a point I'm gonna make it as long as I possibly can I'm gonna make sure that point stays stuck with you yeah and he leaves an impression it's a it's a I think it's a very uh, bold move mm -hmm. uh, it's a it's a risk also mm -hmm. because I, I'm glad that you mentioned that because in the beginning we actually had a discussion me and my editor we said oh this looks like a title sequence we just put uh, you know put names credits mm -hmm. here opening credits but then at one point we decided not to do that because I, I thought what if we just bring take the audience here and show them a super long scene, but without any distraction, mm -hmm. which is the act of looking. We're training the audience for the act of looking for the, to pay attention to the entire movie mm -hmm. like that. Right. So it kind of also sets the tone that you just gonna you need to watch. You need to really watch. Right, and and I think that one of the other themes in the film. Um, is that I, that really sticks out to me and this is going to tie into me I think to the biology of the film is um, exposure mm -hmm. and like fit like photography like there's different like different levels of exposure and aperture mm -hmm. like there's a discussion where she was taking a picture and the husband is asking why are there so many pictures of you mm -hmm. in the same location mm -hmm. same pose and she's like oh he's because he's testing out you know and see like in each shot a different emotion is coming through mm -hmm. you know and that's filmmaking is like that in each scene sequence something new is coming through you can film one scene 20 times and each time each take is going to be a different emotion something different is going to evolve mm -hmm. you know and the mm -hmm. film is like that where with even with the long takes with each second passing a new thought can occur as mm -hmm. you're watching you know and mm -hmm. then you get something different from the from the film and so talk to me about working with your cinematographer um uh shu yao that's the dp uh, uh, Jaho. Jaho. Okay, sorry. Okay, so my, forgive me. Um, because I love the cinematography in this film, mm -hmm. and I love the use of lighting and coloring in this film. There's like scenes that are really bright, like mm -hmm. the scenes with um, the mom in the in the supermarket surround looking at the oranges. Like those scenes are with her are very bright, mm -hmm. but the scenes with Shio are very dark and like mysterious. And then there's scenes with like um, Wei and the dad where they're kind of sitting in the pocket of both light and dark. You know. So talk mm -hmm. to me about the coloring and the cinematography of this film because. Visually, one of my other favorite scenes is where um, Shio emerges out of the forest. They're mm -hmm. looking for him, and he's in the mist. And then the, it becomes clearer and clearer and clearer slowly. And then right after that, I was just like, I gasped because I love this this sequence. Right after that scene in the forest, mm -hmm. he's on the they're on the balcony, I guess, where they're taking pictures. Mm -hmm. And the mountains in the background kind of echo that same sentiment where they're because mm -hmm. the further that something is in the distance, the, the more opaque it is. But then the closer you get to it, the more um, clear the image comes. And it's kind of like the film is like the closer you get to, to, to show, the more you're understanding this character. So tell me, so just talk to me about the cinematography mm -hmm. in this film. Well, actually, I think it, for me, it, in a way, it's the opposite. The closer you get to show, you kind of, you're not sure what you uh, know about him, mm. actually. But the, uh, going back to that scene you talk about in the forest, that was actually... Uh, an idea that came to me during the editing mm. because um, that paragraph of w when the parents were discussing about the phot um, photography mm. it was in the script and I think it was nice and then in the editing I just thought the scene in the forest one day just there's an idea that came to me it, it's like because this is kind of a it's a sequence that people can interpret both as real and a dream mm -hmm. but for me it's all about adding that little bit because they were talking about photography and then the next thing is the show is taking photos. So I think here it's very nice to have a little bit of acro. Mm -hmm. You know, like you, you you have that scene become part of the photo, like the, the photo taking process, right. and you see the exposure going higher. Mm -hmm. And it almost feel, to me feel like a, like a horror moment. Mm -hmm. But what kind of horror? It's not the you know the, the genre kind of horror, mm -hmm. but maybe it's the horror of the parents' fear. You know what, what they fear in, inside. So I think. That was something that, that came to me in the editing process. I think the, the interesting thing about this movie is a lot of the mm, things were 
inspirations come to me um, step by step. Mm. Like in the pre-production, there are some new things that came to me that made me change some stuff or, 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 or chose a different location. In, in the editing and the music choices, like every step of the way, there, there are new inspirations. So I, th that, I think that's what excites me about, about this film. Mm. Yeah. It does. I think, and I, I like when you have your script, you already know what you want, but then as something occurs to you, during the filming process or even during the editing process you can be adaptable enough to say okay yeah, you know what let me open. let me roll with it yeah. let me roll with this yeah yeah and i'm very open in that process because i think it's uh, it's not about sticking to my vision mm -hmm. as you know as some, some some people like to do that they're like i just have this i have to do this but for me it's about yes there's a direction but also i'm open to new mm -hmm. discoveries right and, and the one other thing that i want to talk to you about about i mentioned it briefly the oranges mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I was doing some reading because, again, I, I'm the kind of person, if I see a cup, I wonder, is this cup just a cup or does it have a deeper meaning? So I went looking up the meaning of oranges and the color orange in Chinese culture. Mm -hmm. And it symbolizes vitality and, and warmth and uh, prosperity. And it kind of made me think of, like, not, not physical wealth, but emotional mm -hmm. wealth and familial wealth and stability. And this family is lacking that because it's just the three. And because going back to the the theme of the one child policy being interwoven in the film is kind of, I kind of saw it as when he gives her that orange, that's where the light bulb in her head comes on where she's like, oh, could this possibly be a son, a new son, you know, someone mm -hmm. that I can, uh, someone else that I can look after. Mm -hmm. And then there's the other scene where she's in the, in the um, supermarket and she has all of these oranges around her and it's, I kind of saw that as possibility. Like she's looking at, oh, these are new possibilities. This is where mm -hmm. Maybe I can adopt this child. It's not the thought adopt doesn't fully form, but that's where like the that's like the 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 cell, the first cell before mm -hmm. it multiplies and mm -hmm. and you know a mutate starts to happen. It's interesting that you compare that with um, cells. I think that's very uh, very very interesting. I didn't even think of it in the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know the the thing about one orange versus a lot of oranges. Yeah. I think that's a very good comparison. Um, like you said, it's about vitality, it's about hope. Um, and also, we want, I want the, the DOP and I, we want the space to be very, uh, a little bit cool. Because mm -hmm. this is their life. It's very elegant, very neat, very orderly, but very cold, mm -hmm. clinical. But then you have the orange coming in and breaking up all of this color palette. Yeah, it's very neutral. Their home is very yeah. neutral and yeah. very tans and whites. And just the blue is only present in, um, which I thought was interesting, in Wade's room. He wears mm -hmm. a lot of sweaters that are like blue and black and white, but like it's a very intense blue. Like, mm -hmm. and um, and then Shio just comes in like this bright burst of color, and it seems like a positive thing, you know, mm -hmm. for her anyway. She's like, this could mm -hmm. be a positive thing. Like, she's like, this is a bright burst of color in my life. Mm -hmm. But Wei, I love that Wei doesn't get immediately jealous. Like, he loves he he. You can see he cares yeah. for Shio, yeah. and for her, I think because she and because for her because Wei doesn't have a negative reaction at first, it makes it easier for her to, to kind of foster the idea mm -hmm. of bringing Sho into her house. So talk to me about their relationship because they don't really have many scenes talking to each other, mm -hmm. but, I think yeah, sure. they, I, but I think mm -hmm. their relationship is actually closer than it seems. Oh, of course, yeah. Because the, it, it, it's, a, let's say it's a creative decision mm -hmm. to actually remove some of the dialogue and, and rely on more of their interaction yeah. to, to tell the relationship because there, the, of course, the instant connection, the instant mm -hmm. attraction in the beginning, and then there is a little bit of the, oh, you know, let's be friends, that kind of, uh, you know, with, let's just play games, like we bond through activities, to, through doing things, and then the coin thing, it's both um, a power play, but it's also a kid's play. Mm -hmm. So, like, they kind of, I, I think after that scene, it's more like, oh, way for ways, like, oh, you kind of get me. Mm -hmm. And that actually didn't make him alert, but actually make him more curious about 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 Shaw. Mm, yeah. So so I think I tried to uh, before there might be more scenes in the f earlier drafts about the, the, them having conversations, but for me it's actually more about just the way they are around each other, mm -hmm. and each scene is uh, is uh, more um, expressive without a lot of dialogue. I think that's the the direction I was going for. Yeah, because. Like for, I think for some people, like not for some, for a lot of people, they think that if you have a lot of t conversations, if you talk a lot with your parents, it means that you're really close. But mm -hmm. that in my Sundays, it might actually be the opposite. Sundays people use conversation 
to fill in a void, yeah. you know, and the, the conversation might be just surface level. You're not discussing anything deep, yeah. but then for those people, like they're so comfortable around each other, like, yeah, you, I get you. You get me. We don't really need to say much. Yeah, exactly. There was a moment I don't know if you remember towards the end mm -hmm. when they're like saying goodbye to each other. Right. That was um, I, I shot a version with some dialogue. Mm. But I decided to use a version without any dialogue right. because I think that is something, you know, a lot can be said, mm -hmm. but a lot should be said in the audience's mind. Mm -hmm. They can come up with their own dialogue. Right, because like, because the way you, again, because again, this plays in so much to how these young men play these roles, like you're, the same thing you are talking about before she leaves for the conference, that like you're wondering, oh, is he resentful of them taking mm -hmm. show with them? But then, like, when um, show calls, he does a video call, he picks up. After, like, the phone ring thing, because mm -hmm. he was playing games, but he mm -hmm. picks up. He doesn't, uh, again, like, again, this is where I think you subvert a lot of expectations the audience might have, where you might think, oh, he's not going to answer because he's jealous, he's upset. But he does. And he does it in a way where it's just like a normal conversation. There's no hint of resentment of him feeling like he's been left behind at mm -hmm. all. And, like, when she comes on, like, he's a bright, happy, she's happy. Mm -hmm. And he's happy, and he's talking to her. And like, you know, and it like that. There's these very simple scenes where you really tell the audience, this is how their relationship is. Mm -hmm. You know, this is like, this is not the relationship you think they have. This is, these yeah. people really generally do. He loves his mother. He's a teenager. Yeah, he might be a bit yeah. angsty and have yeah. moody at times because he's a teenage boy and all that. But he's like never disrespectful to his mother. He doesn't resent her. He doesn't have any animosity towards her at all. Mm -hmm. I, I like what you, when you said that you know there's some some of the these nice um, surprises mm -hmm. that you found along the way, and then for example that scene you say oh he might not pick up, because mm -hmm. I think that is the also something that we are trying to achieve with the editing especially, if we're trying to kind of um, create a certain expectation but mm -hmm. sometimes not really follow through. Yeah, I think it is because like the film no seriously because like just there's, there's just, as we're talking there's a scene again where I just like this guy. Um, Shio, like the scene at the dinner table where he's pouring the soy sauce on the rice. Uh -huh. Again, my audience was like, every, people in my audience were laughing, and, but you can tell when people are laughing whether it's an uncomfortable laugh because you're like, what's happening? Like, this is kind of a disconcerting thing because mm -hmm. he's just pouring the soy sauce. And I'm like, you didn't show a shot of the bowl, but I'm like, if you had shown a shot of the bowl, it would have been just like rice swimming mm -hmm. in soy sauce. Like he's just like, oh, my dad says that if you like, you know, because we're probably gonna eat soy sauce with rice, and that's the way to do it. But I was like, that's not, not that amount of soy sauce. Mm -hmm. But again, that's like again, like you kind of subvert a lot of expectations for the characters because in that scene where he's doing this really awkward mm -hmm. and to me potentially menacing thing, I read that scene as a, almost like a threat. Mm -hmm. You know, that's him again. I'm pouring myself all over this family. I'm ingratiating myself into this family. It's the same thing like, like the bathroom scene. Mm -hmm. It's like those three scenes in particular have a very, and the shot with the fish actually, you know, that I'm thinking mm -hmm. about it. The four of those scenes in particular have a lot in common. They've sustained shots and him doing something to test to the boundaries, but he's testing this boundary in front of them. And they are like, they're not judging him. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just, they're not saying, oh, you're being weird or not. They're just like, okay. Mm -hmm. Moving on, here's a piece of fish. Or like, so I like, so like, you have all of these moments in this film, and I think, and honestly, I think that comes from your background personally because my dad was a biochemist, so I kind of like they like biochemists are people who work in that field have to know how to wait mm -hmm. and have to watch and see how a result is going to play out. If you're test, if you're doing like watching cells, like cells take time to to divide and mutate, and you have to be a patient person. Patient, yes, patience. I think that's also something that I would like the audience to have with mm -hmm. this film because um, a lot of people, some people, they, they watch it and they get the surface level mm -hmm. of the story. But I think if you are patient enough to try to understand, to try to really look and try to think, I think you get much more out mm -hmm. of the film. Right, and and you, I think you'd purposely test people in that way because of the length of the film and the pacing. The pacing mm -hmm. of this film is very methodical. It's not mm -hmm. slow. Mm -hmm. To me, it's not slow. It's yeah. very methodical. It's very more like, watch how this scene, watch how this plan yeah. is going to play out. You know, it's like a plot. It's like a... Yes, I, I like aspect. the way you said it's methodical. It's not the slow, but it's methodical mm -hmm. because it, it is for me more like a... I, I kind of conduct it in a way that it's like a music piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks also to the editor, music uh, composer, and, and my uh, sound designer. Everything fits into this, what we're doing a piece of music, almost a very long music, mm -hmm. and I'm the conductor. I think that is the 
that is the feeling yeah mm, and we have to wrap it now so my last question for you because i did get the kind of sense that this film is built like a score mm -hmm. and classical music does play a heavy part in the uh, play a, a very significant part in the score of this film what composer Mm -hmm. inspired you or what, what composer did you listen to most when you were conducting because there is a piece of music and it's not Beethoven um, it's not Beethoven that was playing um, but who which classical composer really inspired you during the process of making this film and, and your composer um, for me I think the classical music is more tied in to the father's mm -hmm. character and also to his relationship with with Shua. Um, so for his character, um, the one I researched the most was Bach. Bach, yes. Yeah. Because uh, his music has this math mathematical kind of mm. a quality to it, and, and, and the father's very square, so I think it's a very right fit for him. Um, for the composer, actually, we don't listen to uh, other stuff. We, we just talked, and he's a very talented person, so he gave me a lot of ideas, and I would choose, and I would pick, and I would tell him, like, oh, this is, this is the direction that we wanted to go. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, one little note about music is that in the beginning, I didn't actually uh, think the movie would have much music, mm -hmm. and it took me a long time, actually. But then, at, at one time, uh, after the for a rough cut, I realized that I do need music, and I actually want it to be part of a, a, a character mm -hmm. in the movie more from a short perspective. So with the composer, we talked a lot and we took some, we took our time to try to find the right thing for, for all the scenes. And going back to when you said about the fencing scenes, every fencing scene, we had a very different kind of music. Mm -hmm. And that's also, I told him like, we, we have these scenes shot very differently. I want the music to also be very, very different. But yeah. not to suggest the emotions. Mm -hmm. I think it's more about like, we, we, we're not telling you I don't like music that tells you how to feel, but it's like the music that, that that's there mm -hmm. allows you to still come up with your own feelings. Mm -hmm. I think that's the that's the genius of, of Toki's score. Right. No, I agree because the fencing scenes in particular, you mentioned they did have different um, styles of music, and I kind of read it as that was because um, Wei is in a, in, in a different place emotionally right. each time. Right. Yeah, that too. That too. Yeah. Of course, you can still interpret it in, in his in, his emotion, mm -hmm. but he the music still makes you feel a certain way that you can still come up with your own, you know, feelings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I did, and um, I know we have to wrap it up. So again, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. This was a great conversation. I wish we had more thank time. <laughs> no, I because like there were scenes about like the fish. Oh my gosh, the fish, <laughs> the fish. Um, <laughs> I wish we could. I would talk about the fish, but we can't. So thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much thank for you. having me. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>